For a lot of people, their car is part of the family. For some people, they love their car more than they love their romantic partner. That's why so many people look after them with great care. But some people don't. Some people really need to learn a thing or two from those who care a little too much about their automobiles. These are things you should never do to your car. Number 20. You should never leave bottles of water in your hot car. Now we all do this from time to time, but actually it's a big foul. You should definitely never ever leave a bottle of water in a hot car. It sounds like a random warning to give someone. I mean, how much damage can leaving one little bottle of water actually cause? Well, it can actually cause a ton. Apparently, a plastic bottle of water can set your car seat on fire if sunlight strikes it at exactly the right angle. Ask Dione, a battery mechanic at the Idaho Power Company, if you don't believe me. Which, you should believe me. You should believe everything that you see and hear on the internet. Anyways, during his lunch break, Dione would be sitting in his vehicle when he saw smoke out of the corner of his eye. When he glanced over, he saw that light was being refracted through a water bottle, causing the seat to catch on fire. He made the video to raise awareness about the risks of leaving plastic water bottles in hot vehicles. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the sweet topic. In this rather bonkers footage, a man does something with his car that we truly don't recommend that you do. Just take a look and you'll see what we mean. He mounted his Hellcat on buggy wheels, making it look like a very flashy version of Ye Old Cart, a horse-drawn one. When seen from the side, it makes the car look very old-fashioned, but when seen from behind, it always makes it look like the car is hovering. Very futuristic. It's peculiar, it's odd, and it's kind of funny, but we definitely don't recommend you do the same. As always, comment down below with the hashtag sweet topic and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed on screen. Number 19. Why you should not ignore car rust. Rust is known as the silent killer of automobiles and could possibly turn a brand new vehicle into a junkyard filler. It can not only reduce the market value of your vehicle if left untreated, it can even render it dangerous to drive. To put it simply, rust could end up killing you. But I have some good news for you. Rust is both curable and completely avoidable. Iron oxide, the sciency name for rust, may be found everywhere on the planet, although some conditions are more conducive to rust. People who live near water have a greater risk of rust since the salt and humidity levels are higher. When this rust hits the chassis of the car, it's totally possible that it could result in structural collapse. If this occurs, the vehicle will be deemed too dangerous to drive. The paint on your vehicle protects it by preventing water from getting to the bare metal. If, on the other hand, your paint's damaged or cracked, the exposed metal will ultimately rust. If rust even finds its way into the engine, then you've got a whole other set of problems. The rust can eat away at the pistons and the cylinder itself, which would dramatically increase the speed of wear and tear. Fortunately, there are some types of engine lubrication that can help fight this from happening. Number 18. Never overfill your tires. Now maybe something distracted you when you were filling up the tires and you accidentally pumped far too much air in by mistake. Or maybe a friend informed you that having your tires overinflated might help you get better gas economy. The fact is, driving on overinflated tires, regardless of the cause, may be harmful to your vehicle and hazardous to you. Here's what happens when you overinflate your tires and what you can do to get them back to normal, because it's a simple and fast repair. When you do this, you're setting up your tires for a blowout, as opposed to having a flat tire which may cause you to lose control of your car and reduce braking distance, putting you and others on the road at risk. When inflated to their full capacity, like an overfilled balloon, tires become rigid and inflexible, making them more vulnerable to damage from potholes, curbs, or debris. 
Furthermore, as a driver or passenger, you'll feel every bump and dip on the road, which is not a pleasant experience for anyone in the car. The best thing to do is to check your tire pressure carefully using a pressure gauge and add more or less accordingly. Check online what the optimal pressure is for your tires, and then you'll be smooth sailing until that next refill. Number 17. Never use the wrong coolant and or antifreeze. What even is coolant and or antifreeze? Well, it's pretty much exactly what you think. It's either going to stop the engine from freezing over during really cold conditions, or it's going to cool it down from overheating. So you can imagine that screwing this up would also seriously screw up your car. Mixing various engine coolants or using the incorrect one may reduce effectiveness and the specific packages, resulting in increased radiator corrosion. The cooling system's protecting layers grow thinner and leakier with time, necessitating more regular engine coolant changes. Corrosion and damage to the water pump, radiator, radiator hoses, and cylinder gasket may occur over time if the incorrect coolant is used, and in the worst case scenario, it may result in engine damage. In the event of a mixture like this, you can contact a mechanic and they'll help you drain and replace the liquids in your car. I mean, you don't want your car breaking down on the highway, do you? Number 16. Never mix up brake fluid and power steering fluid. There are so many different kinds of fluids for a car, it can be really easy to mix up which one goes where. Unfortunately, any kind of mix-up can do very serious damage to your vehicle and could maybe even be putting lives at risk, which is strange to think that a liquid could do that much damage. That's not to say that perhaps, given how close some of these liquids actually are to each other, that it might make some sense to mix them once in a while. Both brake and power steering fluids are hydraulic fluid, which makes you think, is it possible to utilize brake fluid for power steering? The response? A categorical no. It would be disastrous if you put brake fluid in your power steering system. As with the whole coolant and antifreeze situation, mixing up the two of these liquids could result in the rapid deterioration of these systems. So what's the lesson here? Read the labels of them carefully, and if you're still unsure of how to proceed, consult a professional. Number 15. Never park in front of a hydrant. This is one of the golden rules of driving and parking. You don't ever want to park in front of a hydrant. Not only do you look like a total dingus, but you're seriously putting lives at risk. What could possibly even happen if the firefighters need to get to the hydrant? Will they tow your car? Well, no. Let's take this guy's story as an example. Firefighters actually had to smash through the windows of a 2005 BMW 5 Series that was parked in the path of a hydrant, all so they could run their big high-pressure hoses straight through it. That's right, there's no time for a tow truck. This is an emergency. So it makes perfect sense they would do anything necessary to put out that fire, and it must have kind of been satisfying to break the windows of the jerk's car who parked in front of the hydrant. Now, this isn't the first time that firemen have done something like this. Even though it's such common knowledge that it was included in the film Backdraft, and there are lots of other instances online of people having their windows broken by firefighters, there seems to be a surge of BMW drivers who park in front of fire hydrants. I think you can draw your own conclusions about what types of people they might be. Number 14. Never drive with your oil light on. Now, I'm sure we all know of the infamous check engine light, and many of us, I'm still sure, ignore the crap out of that thing when it comes on. It's a pretty vague indication for what might be happening to your car, but if you were to see your oil light is illuminated, you need to take care of that ASAP. Well, why? Because very serious damage could befall your car. The first thing you should do if you notice an oil warning light on your dashboard is check the dipstick to determine how much oil is in the reservoir. If the oil level seems to be low, top it up real quick with some more oil. Is the light gone when you restart your vehicle? If you answered yes, then you solved the problem. 
good for you. If the light is still on, you may be dealing with a more serious issue that has to be handled as quickly as possible. If it remains on, you really shouldn't drive the car and then find the nearest mechanic or call a tow company. Now I know it sucks, but at least you're not in huge amounts of danger. Number 13. You should always keep a quarter tank of gas in your car. Now, I always thought that this was just some weird superstition or something, but apparently there is very good reason to keep at least a quarter of a tank of gas in the car. Your vehicle's fuel tank contains either gasoline or diesel and delivers it to the engine via the fuel line. It's an important component of the vehicle's overall fuel system. Fuel tanks in older cars that were built before the 1990s were mostly constructed of metal and prone to corrode over time. If the gas gasoline pump sucked up any silt or debris in the fuel tank and then delivered it to the engine, it could turn into a problem. This rusty material may clog gas lines, the fuel filter, and even harm the engine itself, in addition to possibly creating issues with the fuel pump. Now fortunately, modern gas tanks are constructed of high-density polyethylene, which prevents corrosion. That doesn't rule out the possibility of silt getting into your gas tank, however. It may happen, typically as a result of poor fuel. However, the odds of it occurring are little to none. Another thing is that as the tank gets lower, the fuel lines can start pulling up pockets of air, and this will cause the engine to run even more hot, which can create some long-term damage to the car. It seems there's a common theme happening in this list. You should keep your car as cool as possible. Number 12, driving barefoot and why it's a bad idea. Now, come on, this is one of the best parts of summer, and not to mention it's really refreshing. At least for me, after wearing boots all day long. What is driving barefoot actually going to do, though? Overheat your engine? Yeah, I'm so sure. So, why then is it a bad idea to drive barefoot? Well, the answer, my friends, is actually very clever. It's not so much what can happen to the car, although the end result is definitely bad, but beforehand. Your foot could cramp, causing you to lose control, or your feet could get sweaty and make it hard to keep them on the pedals. There's a huge list of things that could possibly go wrong in doing this. If you do decide to do this, you're just adding to the already enormous list of things that could go wrong while driving. But then again, I could list stuff that could happen while wearing shoes too. I just can't think of anything right now. So fine, maybe it is more safe to wear shoes for the rest of you. Number 11. Never press the stop button while driving. Now, I'll admit this has tempted me before. I couldn't help but wonder what would happen if I just pressed that button going full speed down the highway. I always assumed the car would just implode or something, but what actually happens may or may not surprise you. Another major question, why would you want to do anything like that in the first place? Well, out of sheer curiosity, I suppose, stopping your car's engine while driving is risky, particularly if your ability to steer and stop is severe impaired. For example, power steering and braking may need your engine running, so cutting the engine would stop those from working. To sum all of it up, if you do hit the stop button, your car is going to turn off. Well, huge surprise there. That's pretty anticlimactic. That being said, do not do this while on the highway, because like I mentioned before, you could very quickly lose control of the vehicle and potentially kill someone. Number 10. The real terrifying reason you shouldn't smoke in gas stations. Now this one strikes me as a huge no-brainer, but then again, so do all the other ones. You'd be surprised how many people either aren't aware that gas is super flammable or they just don't care. There is something else that's quite terrifying about why you shouldn't smoke in gas stations, and it has nothing to do with what's immediately apparent. The main risk of smoking at a petrol station isn't oil spills or anything obvious, but gasoline vapors, which are completely undetectable to the naked eye. 
Now we can view the whole image of what happens when you pump gas using an optical gas imaging camera. Gasoline vapor, shown in the movie as a black cloud, is extremely flammable and ready to combust at any time. Despite the fact that many gas stations have systems in place to limit the quantity of vapors that may escape while you're pumping gas, the amount in the air is actually never zero. Flammable vapors are also one of the reasons it's a good idea to switch off your vehicle when you go to the gas station, since an idling car increases the amount of vapor in the air. When it comes to gas stations, be sure to refill safely by keeping cigarettes, lighters, and any other possible ignition sources away from the pump. Hopefully this sets a good lesson that you shouldn't smoke anywhere near a gas station. Number 9. Never put your car in reverse while driving. Now this is another one of those things that many of us are curious about doing, but would never actually do, right? <laughs> because we, we know it would seriously mess stuff up. As a safety precaution for both the vehicle and the driver, a lot of cars on the road today are fitted with what's called a reverse inhibitor. This inhibitor effectively rejects the request to put the gearbox in reverse while going ahead until the vehicle is reduced to a safe speed to shift. This function is installed on vehicles to protect you and your passengers from expensive repairs as well as to help you to stay safe, particularly at high speeds. The onboard computer in many cars is what controls the reverse inhibitor. Older versions, on the other hand, used a more manual approach with a hydraulic control mechanism that stopped you from completely shifting into reverse. If your vehicle has a reverse inhibitor function, putting it in reverse while driving may be a bit of a letdown, since the feature won't allow anything to happen until you slow down or even come to a complete stop. However, keeping your hand off the shifter while driving an automatic car is the best way to prevent trying this function. Just don't do it. Number 8. Never use dish soap to wash your car. This entry on the list is also kind of a letdown, because who among us doesn't love to go to a fundraising car wash filled with sexy women or men ready to get all soapy and wash your car for you? <laughs> I know I do, but only if they don't use dish soap. Well, then again, even if they do, I'll still probably go. And if you're like me and you want sexy people washing your car, here are the consequences of dish soap, or should I say, the trade-off for your decision. Dish soap is a more harsh soap and will start to strip away the protective coating on the paint, which will in turn strip away at your car's paint job. It's not really all that ideal. It's simply just that dish soap is not really made for use on a car's paint. Even a detergent like Dawn is an abrasive cleaner and can strip away a vehicle's protective top coat. So consider these facts the next time that you're faced with this decision, and I hope for your sake you make the right one. Number 7. Never put your car in park while driving. Oh, now, come on, I was under the impression that this was a totally normal thing to do. And if my sarcasm isn't enough of an indication, it is a very abnormal thing to do when you're driving your car. Unless, obviously, you've properly parked. However, there are a variety of reasons why you may feel the urge to shift your vehicle from drive to park. Perhaps you're attempting to escape an impending collision. Or maybe you're super curious like myself. A product by the name The Parking Pull looks like an unpadded brake within your gearbox. It presses against one of the notches on your output shaft's gears when you park normally. The pawl's location prevents your output shaft from rotating, thus the pressure is intended to bring the vehicle to a swift yet safe stop. If you do try to park your vehicle while driving, the parking pawl will try to do what it usually does. Your transmission, on the other hand, will continue to do its own work. 
Your pawl, as well as the gear that spins your output shafts, may sustain serious damage as it attempts to stop them from spinning. When you finally come to a halt, the gearbox will have been severely damaged to the point that metal shavings may be visible on the road behind you. Essentially, you'd have completely destroyed your car and your pawl. So for Paul's sake, everyone, resist the urge to see what happens. Number 6. Do not use the wrong engine oil. One of the most essential things that you can do to extend the life of your vehicle and make driving a whole lot more pleasant and safe is to choose the correct motor oil during an oil change. Motor oil is the beating heart and soul of your car's engine. It's what keeps it lubricated and running smoothly. All of that lubrication serves to prevent or decrease heat and friction. Given the significance of motor oil, it goes without saying that when it's time for a change, you should use the oil type suggested by the vehicle manufacturer. But what if you use the incorrect oil in your engine? There are a large number of things that could happen, from your car not even starting in the cold, all the way to you having a terrible burning smell coming out of the engine. As a general rule of thumb, the oil is the whole engine's lubricant. So if there's no lube in the engine, it's just a bunch of metal parts grinding against each other. And neither you or your poor engine want that. Number five. The importance of tire balance. It's important to get your auto alignment and wheel balancing checked on a regular basis, all to ensure that your vehicle's in the safest and finest condition possible. But many drivers overlook the indications of a lost alignment or balancing, and as a consequence, they find it difficult to maintain their cars on the road in a straight line. When the alignment is off, the car can even sometimes begin to wobble and shake and keeping control of your vehicle will be much more of a chore. It can also wear down your tires a lot faster. And, kind of like driving under the influence, which I hope none of you do, it's probably the number one thing that you should never do with your car. I digress though, the fix for it is quite easy and a very routine thing to do, so don't hesitate. Go get it checked now if you haven't done it in a while. Number four. You should never disconnect the battery cable to test the alternator. Many years ago, you could test your car's alternator by disconnecting a battery wire while the engine was running. If the engine continued to operate, the alternator was good to go. However, since contemporary cars are loaded with computers and electronics, this is a test that you should never attempt. When a battery cable is disconnected while the engine is in operation, the alternator spikes from a 25 to 125 volt surge within 40 milliseconds. That voltage surge won't harm anything in a non-computerized vehicle, but it will immediately destroy the many computers and costly electronics found in all contemporary automobiles, which would be super expensive to repair and or replace. Now it's likely that your vehicle has at least one computer if it was manufactured after the early 1970s, so throw off that outdated technique from the old days and use a voltmeter to check your vehicle's alternator. Or simply drive your vehicle to an auto parts shop that provides a free charging system diagnostic exam. Don't try to be someone who can fix everything. Sometimes it's best to let the professionals handle it. Number 3. Power Steering Fluid Is it possible for me to drive without power steering fluid? The simple answer is yes, but a much better question is, do you really want to do that? Your vehicle steering is assisted by power steering, which is also protecting your vehicle from wear and tear. If you don't apply power steering fluid on a regular basis, or even don't use it at all, you risk ruining your car's rack and pinion. First things first, if the power steering and its fluid has been a problem for you in the past, you should check it on a regular or even monthly basis in order to determine what the proper quantity of fluid is for your vehicle. You should also do a frequent inspection to verify that your power system's in good working order and that there are no leaks. A word of caution though, while selecting an alternative for your power steering fluid, you should be cautious. All it takes is choosing the incorrect kind of fluid to cause damage and expensive vehicle repairs, just like the ones mentioned before. 
Incompatible fluids may wreak havoc on your seals, rubber components, and plastic, and the incorrect fluid may also have a negative interaction with the remains of the original, resulting in an acidic fluid in your vehicle. Number 2. Topping off your gas tank is a bad idea. Now, I think we've all been guilty of this one at some point. I know I do it and I don't even think about it. It's just become somewhat automatic. But what harm could it really possibly be to put more gas in? Well, quite a bit of harm, actually. These tanks are made to hold a very specific amount of fuel, and going over that amount can cause problems with the evaporative system in the tank, and sometimes can cause cracks and leaks. Overfilling the gas tank may result in liquid gas entering the charcoal canister, also known as the carbon filter, which is only intended to filter vapor. Gas in the system may harm your car's performance, by causing it to operate badly and damaging the engine. Topping off can even harm the environment as well, according to the EPA. Gas stations include a vapor recovery system that feeds gas vapors and gasoline from the pump back into the station's tank after the tank is full, preventing vapors from escaping into the environment. And as a result, any unused gas in your tank that you've previously paid for may be pulled back into the gas station's storage tanks. So when you top off, some of that gas actually escapes. So for the sake of not only your wallet, but also planet Earth, don't top off your fuel tank. Number 1. You shouldn't attach any other keys to your ignition key. Now, I know it can be useful to attach all of your keys to the same key ring, but attaching all of these keys to your car key as well can become much too much for the car key to support while it's plugged into the ignition. The delicate internal components of your ignition cylinder may be damaged by having too many keys on your key ring. Your ignition cylinder wasn't designed to carry a whole lot of weight, so when you dangle a hefty key ring from it, every bump, turn, and vibration will gradually wear out the delicate inner components. Not only this, but it is a bit much in the end. Maybe you can just organize them differently. It really is crazy to see how many things we unconsciously do that are damaging our vehicles. Some of these were pretty obvious, while others came as a total surprise to me. Which of these are a surprise to you? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out the other cool stuff showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.